because it was like when all the regulations came out and it was quite um, not confronting, but it was quite an intense podcast. And yeah, we thought we lost it. I gotta stay on my hustle, you know that I'm grinding for sure. I came my right from the bottom, now they see me chasing my goals. Now they see me on the go, now they see me on the go. It's time to hustle, yeah, it's time to grow. I'm just for the stars and we ain't for the go. Joe Rogan is having like massive issues with Spotify. Well, didn't they, didn't some um, famous artist come out against Joe Rogan and now. There's like a shit, really. I yeah, well, and now Spotify is like thinking of banning their music, or like he's having issues with Spotify, and it's all hectic. I, I don't know about that, but I think I've what I've heard is that like, Jarrigan's posting um, certain podcasts, and obviously he's very controversial. Yeah. And then like Spotify, like taking certain ones down and all this sort oh, of shit, shoot. and like, like come on, like you knew what you were getting into when you signed. Joe Rogan, like, yep. you knew he was going to be a cont- controversial person, yeah, and that you weren't going to agree with shit. Totally. Which is fucked, because, like, what, what? that's the only platform he can be on now, because he signed that deal. Yeah, hopefully they sort it out. I can't imagine him ever bending a knee or doing anything that doesn't align with him, so I'm sure they'll... <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> he'll be, he'll come out fine in the end. A slight technical difficulty there. We've had to restart. <laughs> we actually got five minutes in, and I saw that the mic wasn't on. Yeah, good save. Um, but we'll actually talk again about what we were sort of talking about before: is the your your podcast, and you've you grew it to like a lot of streams. Yeah, yeah. I think we were quite lucky in when we started in the sweet spot of podcasting because it was we could get on sort of quite massive guests that would be hard to get now because they get pitched a lot and because their PR teams are a lot more, I guess, um, cautious. Like you can see what happened with like the Molly May podcast on, yeah. did you hear about that? The Diary of a CEO, she, that massive I've, UK influencer, Molly May. Yeah, went, I've, I've heard it, but I haven't heard what happened. Oh, so she went on, she was like, okay, I don't normally do a podcast, blah, 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 but I'm going to do this one. And she went on Diary of a CEO and she just made all these kind of, comments in the podcast like in the context of a podcast yeah. saying how we all have the same 24 hours in a day and like kind of um I guess hustle culture and saying that she's got to where she is because she works hard um and a lot of people just got super offended and it blew up in her face oh, because they were like I'm so sick of that and shit, it was so man. extreme and I think there are so many PR teams now that are like we're absolutely not letting our people on podcasts so we were just lucky that we got quite a few big people before podcasting was big and when people were like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I haven't been true, on one before. right. We'll yeah. do that. They're not, they weren't so wary about what was going on because even like that's something that I hate about being able to like say get the rugby boys on is everyone's so cautious about what they're saying. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously like it's going to have an effect like on their public image and stuff like that. So I hate it though because – you turn the cameras off mm. and you have this conversation mm-hmm. and you're just like, fuck, I wish that like the boys would be o- open enough to to talk about to it. talk about that sort of stuff on camera. And also you want that open side of them. Like we had we had a couple which were like we had on Toby Pierce who does um sweat. He started um it's like a big fitness kind of app. Empire's his partner's Kayla Itzine. She did like a BBG bikini body guide. Oh um <laughs> and they made just enormous amounts of money but they doing the app but they we had him on and we had it was amazing he was great but we also had his whole like PR team on the call at the same time just like sort of watching us <laughs> and things and we're like oh my god <laughs> like we just have to be so sort of stick to the questions no deviations I got this um I got this guy on holy shit I can't actually can't remember his name which is um which is actually ratchet but <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Amari Jones, Amari Jones. Oh, yeah. um, he was on, uh, have you seen the Netflix series Title Town High? No. Watch this, it's like a a series based on like a high school football team in America uh. and like follow them around school and like getting girlfriends and like their social life and all that sort of shit. Um, it actually blew up really fast and I got the like quarterback off it on the podcast. Like oh, the main amazing. Quarterback. I just messaged him and like it was before it kind of blew up and like, so I was luck. I was lucky, but when I got him on, we had like a Zoom call, and I had him in one corner, then me, and then um, two Netflix um, oh people gosh. watching 
the podcast they had their cameras off so like, i couldn't see them but they were just like monitoring what i was saying and um anna's dad like all these people were like in on the call and i was just talking to this one guy and i was like holy shit so like, hectic eh? yeah i know it was it was kind of scary and i could i didn't really think the podcast was that good because i could tell and you can probably everyone could tell like he was holding shit back and it was kind of just like you know i'm just trying to do my thing and like uh, i want to get to the nfl i was like fuck everybody knows that yeah like, yeah we want the we want the juicy stuff yeah we want the, <laughs> the real you like the yeah. but yeah i guess you know people got to hold got to be careful with that sort of stuff i guess which is social media has done that done great things but shit things as well eh? oh it's definitely a double-edged sword 100 <laughs> percent. i'm gonna make a quick shout out again to our sponsor which i already have before uh arepa um you drink arepa Taj. i do i love arepa boys from arepa big fan they're epic um and it's so good i was just telling you before my partner has the shots you can have like arepa shots which is kind of like brain clarity concentration shots before he has big like work calls or zoom meetings um and he reckons they work for him yeah do you find it works for you because yeah, I find it works for me. Like I, d- I do, but I also I also just quite like the taste. So yeah, like if I'm yeah, gonna yeah. pick something from you know the supermarket, I'm like, oh, this is so good for me. I'm gonna get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's actually what it's like 37 calories or something. I think I read it. Yeah, and it's, and it's delicious. Yeah, all natural, uh, no caffeine, no processed sugar, um, and it helps mental performance. And like I can attest to the fact that I think it really works. Um, so shout out to Arepa for supporting the podcast. Um, use the code Hustlers20 and you get 20% off online. Click the link in the description if you don't want to use the code. It'll still give you 20% off. Go support the boys and support the podcast. Um, obviously, like, I t- feel like I'm repeating myself because we keep talking about some of the things. <laughs> but you've now become, like, an entrepreneur. Did, do you think you always, like, thought that way, like, from a young age? Nah, so the funny thing is, is I think, so my business partner for like four years was um, Viv Conway and she and she was the first person that I did business with yeah. and she's like your classic entrepreneur like Lemonade Stand Kid and I think I've never felt like a born entrepreneur because of the contrast like yeah, I feel right. like I'm a like a creative <laughs> entrepreneur which I think is quite different so it's more yeah. like I remember I used to um, I was kind of known for like art at school so I'd always like paint and I'd get commissions and I would uh, sell artwork at school but I never thought of that like a business because it was more like it's just creative and it's not scaling and it's not product and it's not, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And then same thing with the way that my life and my business has gone. It's always had that more creative slant and it's just, you know, manifested in becoming a business and all that. The business side has always come last as opposed to being like the reason. That's a good place to be though, eh? That's like, it's kind of like finding your passions and then monetizing it, which is sort of what everyone talks about doing for a happy life. Like yeah, totally. Like it's very, it's very fulfilling. Like whenever I think you're creative and your job is to progress and get better at that and sort of dive into that, it's always pretty special. But it's, I think that the challenge is always balancing that with the business side and the number side and like how you scale that when it's not necessarily like a product business. Yeah. How do you like, you have, I'd imagine you have so much going on all the time because you've got (laughs) a lot of, actually let's start with that. So you, let's say you come out of uni, Mm -hmm. what did you study at uni? I actually studied food science and marketing at Otago. Food science, so that's where all the, obviously the foodie side of things comes from. Yeah, but I kind of switched halfway, so I was (coughs) studying psychology because I was, yeah, so when I was leaving school, I w- everyone just expected me to go do like art school and yeah. kind of do creative stuff. And I was like, it sounds really bad, but I, I really wanted kind of the uni experience and I didn't want to be with like sort of hectic, weird, creative people yeah, just like yeah, dive yeah. so deeply into this creative because I was always more like <laughs> commercially creative. Like yeah, I wasn't yeah. like a, here's my dark, deep painting with my, <laughs> you know, like seven pages of meaning for it. I was more like, here's a yeah, picture yeah. that's, quite pretty you know like yeah, so, true. Yeah, so right. I didn't ever really feel like a true artist so I was like I don't want to just dive so deep in this creative space where I feel alienated so yeah. I was like I want to go you know have that experience meet epic people do some you know learn psychology like do that kind of thing and then it was halfway through studying that that I was like oh I'm actually really passionate about nutrition and about you know food science and things so pivoted did a 
science degree in food science and marketing. And then... Um, Do you learn much from that? I did, actually. And it was so funny because my partner now has a food business, like a nutrition business. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, every single thing that I learned at that at uni would have benefited you really well if I could remember any of it. Like I learned <laughs> everything he needs to know on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, and right. And he obviously didn't study it. but So I wish I remembered more, but yeah. um, it was more... It was food science is slightly different to nutrition to study because it's more about how food reacts with each other as opposed to like it reacts in a human. So it's not really human nutrition. It's more like you know if you were creating a product for the market, like how um, you like know flavors you could make go well together. Yeah, or like flavors and like um, you know getting it to market, getting what type of production you would need, what type mm. of factory you would need, that oh, kind of okay. thing. So it was slightly different to like the health and the human nutrition side that I was kind of into. So, what's, yeah. What's your best um, food combination that someone wouldn't have thought of that's, that's unreal? Well, my friends often are just like, you eat the wackest combinations of things. Like, I remember at uni, I would often have, like, um, yogurt and jam on toast because it's like... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that's quite tasty. <laughs> like, a bit of... A bit of sweetness, a bit of... A bit of sogginess? Yeah. <laughs> like like soggy toast, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's, why you have, that's why you have um, toast, not bread, so it gets soggy. You have to eat it real fast. <laughs> I'd, I'd hope so. What, is there anything that um, that I'd actually take into consideration? Oh. Because um, that is just on the personal. Probably meditation. nothing that like anyone except for me would like, so I probably can't really be that helpful. Okay, either. what about like a... Um, Something that actually goes really well together that I guess some people might know, some people might not. Something like, obviously, tomato sauce and mustard goes well together, but like something like that. Well, it's interesting because in part of food science, we did sensory science. So we did a lot of like sensory panels and testing of like finding the bliss point of a certain food or flavour as to when people would like it. So a bliss point is when you're tasting something, say spice, and you're having a spicy curry. You're like, you try it mild and you're like, oh, it needs more spice. And then there's obviously a point where it gets too spicy. Your bliss point is that perfect point of like, that's it. So we often would try and find the bliss point for different foods. But in sensory science, we also learned a lot about how we learn, we take in so much with our other senses, like our eyes. So for example, if you had heaps of different soda drinks, different flavours. But if you were having like a raspberry one and it was green, you would always say it's raspberry. Like people people are really fickle. They uh, think that they're yeah, yeah, tasting yeah. something, but actually they're always tasting with their eyes. Yeah, true, actually, yeah. Are, are you born with a, with the bliss point? Are you born with a certain bliss point? Because you know how a, a lot of people like stuff a lot spicier or whatever, or does that come with like... Eating? So you're born, you're born with certain sensitivities so some people who like really bland food you know how you have that friend and they're just like i don't know don't really Chicken like a lot of flavor yeah <laughs> they're probably a those. super taster like a super sensor which means they have more sensitivity and more taste buds so it's kind of a sensory overwhelm for them to have a lot so they really? that's why okay. they're actually a super taster if they like really bland stuff but we, we're born with a certain amount of taste buds and things, so as we get older, they die slowly. So that's why yeah. a lot of people will like stronger things as they grow up. Spicier like, foods as you get older. Yeah, or like blue cheese or like, you know, olives right, and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. They often oh, okay, yeah. That's because your taste buds are sort of... Dying. <laughs> fuck, that is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. about if you like really spicy food? Does that mean that you don't... You, what do you call that? Um, like someone who needs a lot of... Uh, since stimulation, now what did you say? Oh right, so maybe you, or maybe you killed them all when you were young. So you're <laughs> maybe in your culture you already had heaps of spicy stuff. So you can killed you them can when you come you were up young. with a name for it? Because <laughs> Devonte, <laughs> who works for us, eats spicy as fuck food with everything that he has. Really? Actually, he's trying to get off it now, which is good. It'll, he'll, but he'll get the spiciest spice he can get, and he'll put on everything. <laughs> I, I need a name. We'll just have to make up one. I don't know if there's an official term. Like an asshole <laughs> or a dickhead. It's called crooked. Yeah, go with that. <laughs> Ronnie, do you have any for him? <laughs> what a name! Yeah, you got any names for Devonte? Bully, crooked. The list goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Twisted, <laughs> ugly, <laughs> untalented. <laughs> anyway, um, 
what what business did you start first? Um, so I guess my first official business was really my social media business. So so that was with Viv, right? No, no, so that was actually the the way I met Viv was we were both doing food science at uni. So that's she also did that, oh, wow, yeah, and we okay. were put in the same group project in food science where we had to create like a fruit leather, like a um, food product for a company. And the reason that we became friends is because we were just always on the same page with the group project and yeah. like the way that we thought, the way that we wanted to present, how much time we wanted to put into it. Um, so we just hung out more. And as we hung out, I found out she was doing, she had a sportswear brand that she had started at uni. No way. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I had just started, obviously, my Tastefully Tash page. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time talking about Instagram and Instagram growth and how she was getting sales from Instagram and how I was starting to get like brands interested in doing things. Yeah. So we we became kind of Instagram marketers, like growth hackers very early on. <laughs> how did you, what, what sort of stuff did you focus on? First of all, I want to say that she started with um, food science, went into um, sportswear, and yep. now she owns a vibrating business, yes. a vibrator business. <laughs> yep, so go figure. It. But holy oh, shit, that's I gone. Is it the, um, the Instagram page, Girls, Girls Get, Get Off? off? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. bro. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guilty pleasure, bro, every Sunday. Yeah, normal female pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we yeah so when you when you're talking about like because that's a very important thing and i think that's a something that like well you've obviously nailed because you're close to like fifty thousand followers is it for forty thousand? followers? yeah about about 48 maybe yeah so you've obviously nailed it and it's something that everyone a lot of people want to do and try to do but can't mm. what did you sort of focus on or what you found helped you grow your socials um, I think there was a few things, and they've changed a lot since the however many years ago we were doing it. It we approached it more from like a strategic. We want it to be this purpose, therefore we will look at what everyone's doing, who's growing, and figure out what growth techniques they're using, sort of that they're even subconsciously using. So one of the things early on for me as a food page was reposting. So if you if I took a photo of I don't know avocado chocolate mousse bowl then my aim would be to tag all these food reposting accounts and if then they saw it and reposted me I would get lots of followers that was a way to grow back then and hers was similar in that she would try and get reposted by like health and wellness pages and yoga pages and things like that so that was a growth technique which worked really well then and kind of doesn't now yeah. like one of my friends who I did a book with just after uni she had a massive Instagram account and she she's an artist and she would draw celebrities and then if they saw them they would repost them and she would get followers like Shit. I remember she drew this big YouTuber Bethany Moda um way back in the day and she got 50,000 followers overnight from Bethany Moda like it was oh just the, the age and time to grow yeah <laughs> so yeah we started doing that um and then and then we've almost come full circle in that it's now less about technique and little hacks and now it's just like content and what value you're providing so if you're in a niche and you're providing con if you're providing value to a certain audience then you have to put yourself in their shoes, like, why would I come back to this Instagram account? Like, why would I follow it? What yeah. value do I get from this? And all the accounts that are doing well now are providing, whether it's humour, whether it's, you know, education, whether it's, like, fun, like, whatever it is, yeah, they're, yeah. they're all providing value to a certain niche. So, Tastefully Tash page, I go onto it. What sort of value do you focus on to make me come back? And it like used to, to be a lot of, like, recipes or sort of, and for a while, when I lived overseas, it was more of like an aspiration account when things when that was big. And now aspiration yep. accounts are not really that big. Um, now it's aspiration more, account, like you know, like you'd follow bloggers you liked or whatever because you would be interested in their yoga routine and their like countries they were visiting. Right, it was okay. more about the aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and which suited me a lot because aesthetic was like my number one thing yeah, that I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I have had. Yeah, had to pivot that in terms of just instead of just posting pretty pictures, they kind of have to be giving more, like more value. Mm. So now it's more behind the scenes of my business and like what photo, what fo- like photo gear goes into a big food food shoot or um, you know like mount lifestyle because a lot of people visit the mount and just yeah more value in terms of 
what information I can give people and what I can show people as opposed to just like, here's a nice picture. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay, so you started this social thing, uh, company. Mm-hmm. What? Instagram. Woo. Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah. So then that ended up being both you and Viv? Oh, yeah, together? so it's kind of confusing. So she had Viv and Sportswear, I had Tastefully Tash. I did a book with a friend um, and then I moved to L.A., and then Viv and I were still talking every day. And what we moved to LA for. I moved to LA because the girl who I'd just, Christina Webb, who I'd just done a book with, um, her book agent lived in America and her she had a big career in America. And she was like, Tash, we've just, you know, spent all these months together doing a book. Um, you can get a visa because of your degree in the States. It's a pretty like rare opportunity. I'm moving there. You should move there. It'll be so good for your career. And I was like, okay, this sounds fun. <laughs> so yes. I just applied and did all these things that you have to do to get into America and then lived jumped in. jumped on a plane to the other side of the world. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> which was pretty wild. And it was like the most wild year of my life. I was like living in a movie for a year. So we started, we actually started the, the social media marketing business when I lived in LA because I was talking to Viv on the phone every day. Yeah. What sort of areas did you live over there? I lived in Santa Monica. Oh. It was so nice. <laughs> Do you used to go to, um, what's it called, um, Bubble Gump on the pier? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I Is do, that Santa I Monica do, Pier? Yeah, I do that because um, we lived, I lived on San Vicente and about um, a few minutes from the beach, so I'd walk to the it's beach. All good, it's all good. Yeah, do I stop? Nah, it's all good. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, if you can hear the truck, that's because it's outside delivering <laughs> stuff. He's been there, but it doesn't matter. It's all good. Yeah. No, I was pretty lucky. I lived really near the beach, kind of in the heart of Santa Monica. So I just got to, like, bike around the beach all the time and, like, uh. go do social media stuff. And work. I worked in a gym, in a boutique gym. So you did social media for them, I guess? So my the restrictions on my visa were I had to work, like, a low-level job that wasn't progressing my career. That was the only way I could move there on the Why J1 visa. That? It's like a, it's because it's technically like an exchange visa. So you're meant to go, but not want to live there. And not make yourself better. Yeah, pretty much. And not improve your life. Yeah, so everything. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Holy shit, to country, I've never heard that yeah, before. <laughs> you can't improve yourself in any way. Um, so all of my. <laughs> oh my God, that is on the piss. You can only live here yeah. if you get a low level job yeah. and don't better your life. Yeah, yeah, it was great. So everything had to be under the table for um, social media stuff. And also like the connections that you meet and the social media like jobs and things that you could do you can all progress that without necessarily like a financial gain. So you yeah. can still like progress your life without monetarily progressing your life. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. But you better not get caught doing that because imagine if they saw you being happy and enjoying know, your life and shit. I know, if they followed me on Instagram, I'd be screwed. So um, you, mo- you, you came back here after that, you said about four years ago. Yeah. And is that when you probably started another one? Yeah, so... So the reason that we started Instagram was because we both had clients of our own because we'd grown our own accounts. A lot of companies and people were messaging us like, hey, um, how are you guys doing this? Like, we'd love your help. So we started having our own clients. And then when I was overseas, we were basically on the phone like, let's just combine our client lists and make this a company and just, you know, double down. Yeah. Um, and then it was only about six months later that I moved back to New Zealand and we'd hit the ground running because we'd already started and then we had Instagram for about four years. So that's social media management, like you manage people's social media accounts, is that right? Is yep. that what that business is? Yeah, yeah. it was a social media marketing agency where we had a podcast, we had, we managed like Facebook ads, we managed, we did events, we did um, speaking at different things of like seminars and helping people with the Instagram okay. growth and we ran Instagram accounts. Because that's, I don't know if you know that that's what Court's, Court's trying to do, Courtney, the one that was in here. Oh, yeah. So she's working on doing that now. Oh, nice. Um, and she's going to be taking over our stuff, which is the reason that we're catching up in that because she's actually doing a really good job. She's for um, Blood Brothers, which is the, the uncles of Devon and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and she's doing really well with it and she wants to get into it. And I said, take mine over please because yeah like not to say that like I don't enjoy that stuff but like 
I've almost found myself not focusing on the stuff that will scale the business. Like, yeah. and I've and I've started like focusing on too many things and not doing one thing properly. Yeah. Um, and something always keeps falling, and so I'm trying to like offload some of the work to different people and just like finally outsourcing the shipping side of our clothes mm -hmm. was so unbelievably massive for me that like we didn't have to pack the orders anymore oh, so liberating imagine if you guys had to pack your own orders. how many oh sorry um they the do they pack does them. she yeah they've got i mean they've got a couple of staff but yeah they they pack them at the moment so she's in your um your studio right like you you have like a i don't know is it i guess a commercial sort of warehouse thing that you've kind mm -hmm. of renovated yep yep so, so how did that come about um so my partner has it's called mitchell's nutrition it's like yep. a um nutrition brand and he needed a bigger like warehouse to kind of yep. bring in fulfillment in-house and do various things and he was like oh, okay I'm, i haven't grown into the space yet i should you know make it more usable for other people so that we can you know he can cover some of the rent and things yeah so I was needing a studio, so he was like, well, why don't we just build a studio in the warehouse? <laughs> why so not? I was like, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. So, so handy. So, um, Rani, that's a good idea. Should we just build yeah. one? <laughs> I might just go lease out a um, warehouse and we'll just build a studio. Just, yeah, it's super easy. Just, just a, you know, an afternoon's work. Fucking not. Yeah, it was a bit hell. of a, um, he did really well. He did spend a long time on it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's then, cool. It's cool. So cool because it's like yeah, it's pretty. Is it, is it like curved in the corner or yeah? And yeah, it's, it's got, got that other infinity wall, and it's yeah, it's all go. So that was good. Um, so now I have a physical studio space, and yeah. then there's a mezzanine floor where the girls get off, girls work upstairs. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what a setup! A few uh, good brains there. Yeah. Um. So, the, the social media marketing company that. Went on for how long? It's still going? No, nah, it's not. It is going now? No, so the the management part isn't. So we still do the podcast, which is still called Ace the Gram, but we... You sell the company, is that right? Hmm? You sell the company or... Yeah, so around COVID, like when COVID first hit, we hadn't, like we were full steam ahead, like the agency was all go, like all yep. cylinders blazing. But it was kind of what you were saying of when you try and do everything, you start to drop things. And I was like... I realised that we would have these big chats about, okay, we're changing our forecasting plan because COVID's hit, like we need to reevaluate. Yeah. And then within, you know, when you zoom out and you're like, is this actually tracking where I want it to? Like we had to zoom out to be able to be like, is this aligning with where we want to be long term? Like, is this what we want to do? And In terms of like lifestyle or like um, financially or? Just the whole whole business in terms of, yeah, financially what it's, you know, dropping out the bottom. Yeah. Also, what do we like the day to day work of it? Like, do yeah. we want how many clients do we want? What style of business do we want it to go? Like, do we want it to have lots of clients and do not as much for them, or do we want fewer clients and do heaps for them? So it's like a yeah. more premium agency. We actually just had that conversation. Oh, really? That too, actually. Yeah, it's a pretty important yeah distinction because they're very different yeah and obviously i'm assuming you wanted to be more boutique like yeah. less people more effort yeah so that was kind of my um what i was thinking um and then viv was more kind of like let's scale it Numbers. to like this blah 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 um so we just for the first time since we started we were like oh i think we're starting to have different visions for it yeah um so we were like okay what are we going to do to fix this and I was like, oh, well, wait, why don't we just sort of, you know, do this model of it? And then I was still doing photography stuff on the side. Mm. So I was kind of financially fine, but because the business wasn't, the vision wasn't big enough. It was kind of like, oh, maybe we either do it all out or we don't do it. Yep. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, I'm pretty happy to like, to change tack and not do it. Yep. So yep. so we had this, we had all these intense discussions. We were like, oh my God. And then it, we decided to, change up the agency and stop it um and it was like a big breakup honestly i was like crying on the couch i was like oh like this is how yeah, you know it, it was be. full on because it was what we'd always known and how long was it we'd been well we'd been like 
basically living with each other and working on this business for like four years plus like a year of on the phone every day. Holy like we were just shit. so intertwined. Yeah. It was like a marriage. So it was a big 100%. change up. But then from there, we took a bit of space from it and then we were like, okay, we can still do aspects. Like I'll take the creative stuff from it and carry on with those clients and then ramp up Tasteley Tash. And then she was like, I'm actually fine to do Facebook ads and things. Why don't I carry it on in this capacity? And yeah. I was like, yeah, sweet, like 100% keen. Um, and it just evolved into me starting a creative photography business for food and product, which is now Tasteley Studios, and her growing the agency side to be more like Facebook ads and sort of backing and stuff. Yeah. And then um, she sold it, the client list, about six months, a year ago. And then obviously started Girls Get Off and then Girls Get yeah. Off is thriving. So we look back on it, we're like, wow, that was the best decision we ever yeah, made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, yeah. that's scary too because like to be able to understand or realise that it's the best move because like like you said, it's like your baby, like – you grow. You spend so much time on it. Yeah. To actually turn around and be like, this might not be the best thing, and then the outcome you guys have had, that must have been tough. Totally, and also just just thinking about like, are you what parts are you actually enjoying? Like when I thought mm. about it later, I was like, I had my job had just turned into a nine to five. Go to Instagram office, do back end stuff, like manage difficult clients. Like nothing was creative. The only thing I think I liked about Instagram was the travel and fun stuff and because I worked with my best friend every day. Like, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was pretty much why I decided that I'd liked it. But yeah. really, it was not, I was not living my best life. So yeah. then with Tasteful Studios, I'm like, wow, it's so different when the work is so fulfilling and everything comes easier because you're, you know, you're kind of in your abundance and you're aligned so everything else comes. Yeah, yeah. Like, way, way more easily. So you said she sold the client list so not necessarily the business or or that all came i guess because you guys still use instagram podcast so yeah so she couldn't sell like the name in the mm. agency because we are instagram like it, no yeah. one would kind of rebrand to instagram but what a lot of bigger agencies do is instead of them like recruiting x amount of new clients they'll just buy a list off, yeah. so they'll just yeah, buy the client list so that then they can then have, you know, all those clients that were already signed up to plans then just transfer over to their social media marketing company. I'm assuming that has to, like, have some sort of agreement with the people themselves or the client. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting that um, a lot of clients sort of are fine with that if they're looked after well. So yeah, they, right. yeah, I was, we had quite a few discussions about that, like how are the client's going to feel, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, did they any were any like oh no nah, because there was only there was you. only a couple who were just very very closely linked to us so yeah. we do um like a we do some stuff with um a few kind of New Zealand th brands that we just have really close personal relationships with those yeah. people so yeah. they were more just like oh yeah we'll we'll reevaluate but the majority of people were like yeah amazing yeah cool yeah ah that's that's so interesting um do you do you rent out that studio quite often like is it quite because how long has it been up well it's only <laughs> so it's only been finished uh, like since the very end of last year and then it was holidays so it's brand spanking you <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah right. so that'll be a big focus for this year Mul like multiple streams of revenue is like something that gets talked about a lot and i think f for you that seems to be quite important yeah. what do you s what do you see like is is important in that in multiple streams yeah, yeah, it's a good question because I think last year, like Tastefully Studios did so well, but then I went on holiday and I was like, this whole business is so reliant on me. Like as much as I have digital products yeah. and things that take away, like it's only the tiniest percentage of the business. Yeah. Um. So that was a big wake up call of like, okay, this year it, it's definitely a, a bigger focus on diversifying Tastefully Studios to include a lot more, like more passive income Yep. products and things but um as well as that like carrying on with the other stuff that I do in a, in a capacity that it's not going to affect the main the main thing which is Tasteless Studios so I yep. do like some podcast producing for um like KGI Zespri and things and then oh, yeah. I do um obviously Instagram podcast and then we do like Instagram consults yep. which are just like social media marketing strategies um and then 
And then Tastefully Tash is slightly different to Tastefully Studios. So that's like brand collabs and things. Yeah. And that ticks away. So it's still like, yeah, making sure that there's different things happening. <laughs> so not all my eggs are in one basket. Do you have a, another few companies or like actual companies themselves, like separate companies? No. So there's just, just Ace the Gram, Ace, well, Ace the Gram podcast. Oh, Mount Studio is the new studio. Right, and then yeah. Tastefully Tash, Tastefully Studios. What's Pepper and Me to you and all that stuff? Oh, so Pepper and Me is... One of my clients, so right, she, okay. yeah, so she does. She's obviously amazing and does has the herbs and spices foodie empire, and we just shoot every month. Well, that's got to have a massive impact on there. That's the one thing I noticed. I went onto that page, the aesthetic of it, and that was just how I know. Oh, that's, that's so good to know. Honestly, <laughs> I was, yeah, and and were you potentially involved in like a? like a knife company or something as oh, well? Oh, Kane and Abel. Yeah, so that's Cherie's company as well. So I shoot, so she has multiple companies and yeah. then I'll shoot her different companies. <laughs> We're in the wrong business, bro. <laughs> what are we doing talking on mics and trying to sell clothes? <laughs> <laughs> what fuck are we no, it's a to? great, it's a great, you guys have such a sick setup. I was just saying when I came in, I was like, Ace the Gram needs to up their game. Like, this is such a setup. Ace the Gram? What do you, you guys have like a massive, <laughs> you have the size of this gym, don't you? Yeah, but it's not like, we haven't, we haven't got the kit. <laughs> I, w- I listened to a podcast. Oh, actually, sorry. I've only just started listening to it. I haven't finished it, but, um, you did with someone that was number 115, I think. And it was to do with growing your uh, sales. Uh. Um, a lady, and she runs, I think she sounds Australian, and she runs a company, I'm trying to think what it was called. Oh, Check it. 155. I just, started, I just started, Not, um, I started listening to her. Tribe Skincare? No? Yeah, Tribe, Tribe Skincare. Skincare. Yeah, she's incredible. Like, massive business and she has this tiniest team and she just like ran it from her house for ages like it's wild if you were to take like one thing about like how she said growing sales that you learned out of that podcast what would it have been like i'd say one of the the things that has come up a few times with guests like her is like pinterest is such a dark horse when it comes to (sighs) i love listening to that and how that pain adds on on Pinterest. Yeah, and the, the really? beauty of a Pinterest uh-huh. ad campaign is that you don't have to run it. Like, you get allocated an account manager. So, you sign up with Pinterest for ads, and then they, they give run you the someone. Ads. Yeah. <laughs> it's magic. Yeah. So it's still like for, that. It's still like that. Or yeah. So, for things like skincare, interior, like weddings, DIY, um, a lot of, like, food products, probably apparel, like, Pinterest can be so powerful. Note that down. <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Pinterest. We're gonna start learning how to use Pinterest. Yeah. Um what about personally what you think uh helps grow sales and I mean in your area it's probably more like clientele or mm. services. Like what how do you find grow what do you find grows it? I'd say um sharing like testimonials and case studies and happy customers. So I'd say reviewing. Reviews. reviews, yeah, Fuck, testimonials, reviews. It all just comes down to like social proofing of someone, not yourself, you know, telling someone. Because basically what that does is if you're following, you know, if you see an ad or a social media page or whatever it is and you hear someone's first-hand account of like how that benefited their life in what way, yeah. then you immediately think of like how that will benefit your life in that way. Yeah. So yeah. whether it's, you know, a vibrator or whether it's, you know, a photo shoot or whatever it is, you need to see and hear how it's going to benefit your life. You know, it's funny that that vibrator one is like, I've actually been on the like Girls Get Off website yeah. to like read those um, Testimoni- testimonials testimonials <laughs> chuck one in the cart you yeah, put one yeah. in the cart <laughs> just slap one in the cart and I try it out yeah. but like I was just like like laughing at them like they were so funny and I was like who even thinks of that like to just chuck up these things and like people are like saying like best O's I've ever had and like yeah that's pretty crack up that is crack up um, do you dive in much into like your paid marketing side of things like Organic, I'm assuming you're quite, you're very good at and talented at being a creative. Mm. Um, you said obviously Viv was quite experienced in the paid side. Are you the same? Like, do you use it often? No, so I don't. But when we, when we did agency work, like it's such an important component of yeah. a lot of brands. Like just because of the style of my business, it's not, 
as suited to me. But if I had a product business or another style of business, like I would definitely be using paid ads. Like yeah. Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, TikTok ads, like Instagram ads, like they're all so powerful. Has Facebook ads changed since like, you know how, I think it was Apple changed the like tracking stuff. I heard that that had an effect on Facebook ads. Do you know anything about that? Or? Yeah, so we were... We were like, wow, this is going to change the entire game. But really? it, it hasn't seemed to have the impact that we anticipated. Like, yeah, it seems right. to be tracking okay. Like, their Facebook ads are only ever going to get more and more expensive. So, like, there's no better time than now to get on it because it's just going to get more expensive and yeah. harder to sell. But they, they're still super powerful. Do you yeah. look after, did you look after any clothing companies? Did we look after clothing companies? That's a good question. No, we never had a clothing company. Yeah, no apparel. Nah. That's weird. I know. It's quite a, I would say, saturated market. Eh? Like, there's yeah. quite a lot out there. We've had That's consults with um, different, yeah, apparel companies, but no, we've never done paid ads for them. So when, like, you, with, like, products-based things, what was, like, your focus when you were going into, like, a paid ad for, like, a product-based company? Like... Was it like a certain campaign or was it like, you know, just showing the products a lot or what What did you sort of find worked the most? What does it vary, I guess? Yeah, I mean, it does vary quite a lot. One of the things that worked quite well is obviously any like retargeting campaign is really the, probably the most powerful way of doing a paid ad strategy. So, right. you know, if you've got your facebook pics on your website and then you're retargeting people that have already shown an interest yeah. then that's always going to be more powerful because they've had you know the number of touch points they've needed to have with your brand for them to actually purchase yeah um yeah. so you pretty much start with like awareness campaign so whether you're getting your clothes on you know influencers or celebrities or sports stars or whatever it is and then you just pretty much take them further and further into the funnel and then by the end that's when you want to convert them via like a call to action retargeting ad on Facebook. What would that look like, do you think? Well, it would kind of be like... Quite to, like quite salesy. Yeah, so, so a, a campaign could be, for example, like a video on, say like, you know, Sam Kane running down the street, like in a, you know, in a little bit about him and then what he's wearing. And then however many seconds of that video the audience watched they would then get put into a new pool of people that it would get retargeted a new ad Holy and then from shit. there they they just get taken further and further down until the final one is like you know 20 percent off blah 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 and it's like an ad to go to that page to buy that thing oh, is it like that like it can be pretty that. technical hence why i was not in charge of that <laughs> how did 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 she sort of learn that by just doing and or was that all learnt through like well, she she is really across it, but she also puts up her hand and is not like she wouldn't run that type of campaign these days for people. She you'd get like Facebook ads now, and a lot of those type of paid ad campaigns are so technical that you would go to like a full expert in that realm yeah, because they are right. so like finicky. So yeah, we would outsource like the that type of thing at the end. That's interesting. That's a it's a whole another side of like. I mean, I've been talking about it for ages and I still haven't done anything about it, but, like, where I would say, like, our strengths would be would be a more of an organic side of things. Mm. But when it comes to, like, paid stuff, like, we have, like, pretty zero presence. Yeah, and well... It's so underrated or undertapped. Like. But, and it, but it's so good, though, that you do have the organic skills because that's the skills that outsourcing can't replicate as well. So yeah, what a yeah, lot of so. um, people do, like, for example, we talk to the girls who own dessert boxes in Aussie and they like crush and they have their their organic and they call it like community building so they're never trying to like sell directly to those people they're just community building their whole strategy is like a content channel that they want their audience to feel part of the community come back to be entertained like yep. it's almost like a a channel that you would watch TV on and come back to each week because you just love it. Like it's a community builder. Yeah, and then, yep, yep, And yep. then they would 100%. use their paid as conversion. So they wouldn't even use the same strategy. Their paid would be targeting those who interact with them organically, but it doesn't like take away or taint from the community channel. Yeah. So in a way it's like two different strategies. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's something that like we've massively tried to focus on is community and – um like we in our 
in our bios is like a brand, a culture, a lifestyle. Like yeah. trying to build like community and um, friendships within people and people see each other and they're like connect because of 100%. this thing yeah. that we've created. Yeah, that's like, I've got to say that with apparel, it's almost the one exception of like selling via your Instagram page because people literally shop your page if yeah. you're apparel. Like yeah. if I go to, you know, spell like Shopo, whatever, I will purely be shopping their page. Like I won't yeah. be like, because that is the value. Like I wouldn't be trying to, you know, find some funny quote in their caption or whatever. I would be like shopping them. So yeah. that in, in yeah. a way you guys are in such a lucky spot that that is the style of marketing that suits your social channels and your business. Yeah, I think because I think of like, um, do you know who Nalk Boys are and stuff, yeah, for example? Yeah, But like, their clothes are pretty rubbish. Like, yeah. you look at their clothes like their shit house. But they sell, I'd say they sell more clothes than most clothing brands in the world. Yeah. Because of the value that they provide through social media. And like, I don't know, I kind of see almost more value in doing it that way than going down the like normal clothing brand round. Well, I, th like, I think that's I mean? smart because in the future and the age that we're in, that's what sets you apart and that's what you can double down on. Like you look at the Jagger and Stone girls. Do yep. you know Lucy and Nikki from? I've heard the name Jagger and Stone, yeah. Yeah, so they, they're like influencers who started a brand and they've got a full clothing brand, but they also have a big podcast called Happy Hour. But they, like there's a lot of examples of like the Nelk Boys or like, you know, these people yeah. that their brand is so much more powerful and so much more community driven and high converting because they've done the personal branding thing alongside it yeah and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can choose either strategy but the personal branding one you're always going to have more buy-in and it is a more like I guess 2022 kind of business style well, I think it creates more personal connection to it and like um I mean even with the way the world is at the moment like people are dying for personal connection and like yeah connecting and relationship and stuff like that and like we tried to from the whole start of it like the first year and a half two years now two and a half years now has been like trying to put my face to the brand and like mm -hmm. build it around myself and give it an image I guess and yeah. a personality so people almost connect with it as if it's a person um obviously with that comes um you know downfalls which is if we mess something up like that holds me accountable for it. Mm -hmm. But like happy to front the camera and go, guys, I fucked up. Like, yeah, this is what's happened. And something I've learned over the time now is that people are way more understanding than you think. Yeah. And they also have really short memories. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah, true. It's insane. Like, you, and, it. Now, <laughs> and you watch like the PR machine now of like scandals that happen amongst social media pop culture and it's like you know something will happen someone will get cancelled and then they just the formula is they just lay low for however long it needs to be come back with a slightly different tilt after their apology thing and then they're, they're back they've probably got more of a presence because they grew 100%. more awareness in that time like think of like um C Breezy like Chris Brown yeah and their man hits his partner and the world hates him and it's almost like you're listening to his music and like no one remembers anything that happened back then. And a lot of those really established people almost, it's like you just have to go through that process and you haven't actually made it until you've gone through that process. Like, mm. you know, the Logan Pauls of the world and things. Yeah. It just elevates their presence because they've actually gone through that whole cycle. And if you haven't yeah. been through the cycle yet, it's coming for you. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. Those Paul brothers, man, they're doing some crazy stuff. And they've like super seated YouTube. They've, they've just carved out this whole... yeah for themselves yeah it's crazy they must be on some massive coin now and now they're like full investors like financial world like crushing it with all the billionaires like at their little conventions and stuff like it's how wild. do you know how old they are yeah i think logan is 27 ish mm. yeah and jake is a few years younger because i remember no we were in li we i lived in la pre them blowing up on youtube so it was just it was just before Team 10, like, really went bananas. Yeah. And um, Christina, who I was living with, went to this Disney Channel thing and met um, Jake. And Jake was like, oh, I'm building this Team 10 thing, blah, blah, blah. It's going to, like, be extra and take over the world. And she was like, eh, like, weird. <laughs> this random guy, Jake or something, came up to me and was, like, saying how he was starting this Team 10 thing. No and way. And then Team 10, like, blew up 
And then obviously their careers have just gone wild. Holy shit. I feel like I've gotten like 10 times smarter during this conversation <laughs> in the last hour. How about you, Rani? Probably not. No, nah, absolutely. You probably not. fell asleep. <laughs> I've just been on my phone chilling. Yeah, have you even changed your camera? A <laughs> couple of times, but did I ever tell you that story about Jake Paul? Like, it's one he's one hundred percent chilling with the billionaires now. Like, my mate works on a super yacht, and they're at Saint Bath, which is I'm not sure if you guys know where that is. It's off the coast of maybe like Italy or France. Or yes, whatever. yeah. And they were all on the super yacht for New Year's, and there was Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Drake, little baby Leonardo DiCaprio, Mike Tyson. This is your mate. Yeah, and he's and like he works on the boat, right? But like Jake Paul's like. Kicking it with all the big dogs. That's insane. Well, the thing with Jake oh, and Logan oh is that they've always been more on the owner route than the creator route. Like Team 10, yeah. Jake literally signed them. He was not like managed, you know, like a lot of the pop stars and the different people back in the day, all of the people actually making money were the people managing them and that yeah. was the face. Yeah. Whereas like what Logan and Jake have done are they are not only the face, but they're the backing and they're making like their real money. So yeah. they, they're like, making different kind of waves than, I guess, previous big faces or names. They're smart men. Do you think that um, some of those fights are set up? Yeah, well, I think they're all set up in terms of, like, who's going to be the best, who's going to be the most, like, drama and attention. Yeah, and, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I think I think the actual, like, Fight itself, fight, you think it's... I think it's legit to a point, yeah. But I'm very, I'm very, like... Um, optimistic Like I'm often not Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But like Yeah And yeah What you were saying about Like say obviously Out of the ring Like This The value that they get From like I mean it's almost Sort of getting seen through now Like people are starting To click onto the stuff But You know The value that they get through Like When he grabbed his hat off His yeah. head And like yeah. Starts and that, selling that's, cats oh, got your hat That is a thousand percent all stage yeah, yeah all that stuff Yeah But I think as well like Jake is quite interesting Because he's almost given himself this role of like the villain So he can't really get cancelled So he can just go you yeah. know on his trajectory But he's not in this role of like you know some pop princess or whatever Who's just going to be Who's inevitably going to fall yeah, because people, true, yeah, he, right. he's just like on that trajectory. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an interesting like place that he's kind of put himself in. What's next for you? Um, next well, big plan. This year, this year's hopefully going to include like a Europe trip and kind of like a photography trip and things. And it's more a year of like last year was just full Tasteful Studios, business growth, like revenue growth. And this year's more like business growth in terms of skills and experiences and like investing back in kind of learning different things yeah um yeah so it'll be grow the studio grow the sort of other products like digital products that go within the studio so it diversifies the business a bit more um but yeah kind of do a lot more like life stuff this year like in terms of like travel and like buy house and yeah, things nice. like that hopefully so. um COVID doesn't mess all that up. I, no, I mean, I, I everywhere else is sort of like normal though, eh? Like, you could get there, it's just about Getting home. coming back. Yeah, it's a bit niggly. Omicron is definitely being very naughty at the moment, oh but <laughs> we will see how we go. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming in and sharing your wisdom. Oh, and thank you having so much for having me. I was um, stone's throw from my house. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, but it's been good, been good for a chat, and we'll keep in touch. And actually, yeah. can I ask one last question before yes. we wrap it up? If you were to walk into one three eight as um, if you were to work for one three eight tomorrow, what would you change immediately? Or if like, I was what, to work, yeah, yeah. Like or. if you were to if you were to be a part of one three eight, like what would what immediate changes would you make, if any? Oh, that's a good question. She's like, what's one three eight? No. Why? Well, Instantly. first of all, I'm very impressed. I'm honestly very impressed with like the. All that technology in the kit. So it's <laughs> <laughs> all going well. Um, no, I think you guys are on a great trajectory. I don't have any glaring advice. The accountant wasn't too impressed with all the camera and equipment. <laughs> he wasn't very happy. Tell him it's an investment. Exactly. Branding. Do you invest a lot? Or like, are you into that sort of stuff? I'm into like, as in I think of the whole time, I just automatically invest stuff into Shares, and then yeah. I think it's. I finally started making money. I was losing money for quite a while there. Um, and I do like hobby crypto, not very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably lost 
way more. I've probably lost more money in my investments than um, made, but I try and like start now somewhere so that um, it's 100%. not totally foreign to me. Um, did you just see the recent current like valuation of sharesies, the business? No, but oh, I was meant to um, go to a talk with the founder next week or something because it was Found just of sharesies. Yeah, they're like amazing. Apparently, it's Kiwi. Oh, like a seg- seminar or something. Like yeah, that yeah, like a organised thing that this person was putting on. They were like, "Oh, yeah, come to this thing." Yeah, yeah. I think it's like. Um, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure it was four hundred million. Was Shit. the quote or the valuation on it? That's impressive. How old are they? Not I, old. I, eh? I don't think they're old. Maybe like I. I feel like I've only heard of them in the last three years. Yeah, but. Then again, I'm not very up with investments, so they could have been around for ages. Yeah, true. A mate of ours, actually, uh, he sort of told me, but I won't mention his name because he wasn't allowed to, like, it's sort of under mm. wraps, but what um, I think Sheezy's have done is they've, they created this thing, I don't know if you saw it, um, about getting someone, like, random into the draw to get onto the, like, board of, oh, wow. the director of Sheezy's. Oh my gosh. And they just put it out to people and it got shortlisted and shortlisted and then people got flown in for interviews in Wellington and then shortlisted. Um, and he's down to the last two. Oh my gosh. That would be such so an amazing experience. You sit it. on the board of Sharesies in the room with them and you get flown to Wellington once a month, sit in the meeting with them, get paid for it once a month for a year and then you become a director of the company or something like that. Holy. It's fucking ridiculous. That is next level. I missed out on seeing that memo of a flag. (laughs) (laughs) Next time. Pick me, pick me. Yeah. Wait for Apple to launch their. (laughs) Apple? Holy shit. Imagine that. Yeah. Um, Okay. Thanks, Ash. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Sweet. Thank you.